Hi everyone, and welcome to our first video lesson from part two of the course. We've returned to single variable calculus, and we're going to be studying some new approximation techniques. For a little motivation and direction for the second half of our course, please check out my approximation overview video. We're going to kick things off with a lesson on Newton's method. This is a procedure for approximating the solutions, or the roots, of some kind of an equation. As a motivating example, suppose we wish to solve the equation x to the 5 equals 1 minus x. How would you do it? Well, one thing you might try is moving everything to one side and factoring it. I mean, you could write this as f of x equals x to the 5 plus x minus 1 equals 0, right? And maybe you try factoring this thing in the middle. Oh, but look at this thing. x to the 5 plus x minus 1? I don't know how to factor that. It turns out there's actually no nice way to do so. It just doesn't work out. Does this mean that there's no root? No, there is a root. After all, look at the graphs. Here's y equals x to the 5. Here's y equals 1 minus x. You can see that there's a point where the graphs intersect. This is going to be the solution to our equation. It lies somewhere between x equals 0 and x equals 1. But where? If we can't factor this thing, how are we supposed to locate this point exactly? Well, the sad news is, folks, we can't. There's no way to precisely determine the solution to our system. And that's not something that's unique to this equation. There are many equations out there that we'd like to solve, but we just don't have the tools to do so. So we're going to have to settle for the next best thing, an approximation. Our new problem becomes, how do we approximate the roots of an equation f of x equals 0? From the previous slide, we saw that the function fx equals x to the 5 plus x minus 1 must have a 0 somewhere between x equals 0 and x equals 1, right? You can actually confirm this fact using the intermediate value theorem. If you plug in 0, you get a negative number. If you plug in 1, you get a positive number. The function's continuous though, right? So there has to be a point somewhere in between, we'll call it x star, where the function crosses the x-axis. If you want to approximate that x star, you can use what's called the bisection method. This is by far the most primitive method that we have for approximating a root. The idea is super simple. We already know that the root lies somewhere between 0 and 1, right? So let's bisect that interval, cut it in half and check what happens at the midpoint. In this case, my midpoint is 1 half. And if you punch in f of 1 half to your calculator, you should get minus 0 0.46875. It's a negative number, right? Ah, uh, but wait a second. f of 1 was a positive number. So again, we can use the intermediate value theorem to hone in on the location of our root. This tells me that x star is somewhere between 1 half and 1. So keep going. Cut it in half again. We'll cut it at the point x equals 3 quarters. If I compute f of 3 quarters using a calculator, you should see that this is a negative number. But wait a minute, f of 1 is positive. These two facts together tell me that my root x star is somewhere between 3 quarters and 1. And you can continue this process if you want. Keep bisecting your interval to hone in on the location of x star. Now this method is really simple, really easy to use, but it does take a long time to converge to a root. It's slow. The advantage though is that it will always work. As long as your function is continuous, it will eventually lead you to your root. Next, I'm going to show you a more sophisticated alternative to the bisection method. It's called Newton's method. It converges to a root much more quickly but it can fail in certain situations. So here it is, folks, Newton's method. It's a faster alternative to the bisection method that relies on linear approximations. To start things off, we begin with an initial guess as to roughly where the root might lie. It doesn't have to be exact, but it is helpful if you can get close to the root. In our example, we've already determined that the root lies somewhere between 0 and 1. So maybe for my initial guess, I'll just use the point x0 equals 1. Well, I did my best, but it looks like we didn't end up at a root. So the guess might have been close, but it's not exact. That's fine. We weren't expecting it to be exact. The important thing is we have a place to start. 
from this value, x0, how can we move closer to our root? Well, the idea here is very simple. Since the tangent line at x0 gives us an approximation of the values of my function, rather than trying to figure out where my function is equal to 0, maybe I can try to figure out where my tangent line is equal to 0. The tangent line is a much simpler function to work with, so this shouldn't be too hard. This point, where the tangent line crosses the x-axis, I'm going to call x1. Notice that in this graph, x1 has brought us closer to the root of our function, x star. If you'd like to move even closer to x star, do the same process again. Consider the tangent line to your function at this new point, x1. Figure out where that tangent line crosses the x-axis, and that will be your next point, x2. Repeat the process as many times as you like. In many situations, you'll be moving closer and closer to the root after every iteration. And that, my friends, is Newton's method. We use a linear approximation over and over and over to bring us closer and closer to that root. So really, the only question that remains is, once you have your guess x0, how do you actually compute x1, x2, x3, and so on? Well, I'll show you how to get x1 from x0, and the process is exactly the same for the others. So to figure out x1 from x0, we first need to find the equation of this tangent line in pink. If you think back to your linear approximation formula, the tangent line is given by y equals f of x0 plus the slope of the tangent line, f prime of x0, times x minus x0. And of course, we're trying to figure out the value of x where my tangent line crosses the x-axis. That's going to be our x1. Well, if it crosses the x-axis, this expression should be equal to 0, right? Now it's just a matter of isolating for x. If I move this f of x0 term over, I'm left with f prime of x0 times x minus x0 is equal to minus f of x0. Now I'll divide by f prime to get x minus x0 is equal to minus f of x0 over f prime of x0. And finally, I move the x0 term to the right to get an expression for my x1. x1 is given by x0 minus f of x0 over f prime of x0. Now you can imagine the exact same procedure is going to be done from x1 to get to x2 and from x2 to get to x3. With this in mind, the formula that you see here can easily be extended to get the general iterative step that we use in Newton's method. On this slide, I've included the general nth step that we use when carrying out Newton's method. Once we've figured out the nth approximating term, we need to figure out the tangent line at that term and set it equal to zero. Well, the tangent line at xn is given by the same sort of expression that we had on the previous slide. By setting this expression equal to zero and solving for x, we figure out the x-intercept of the tangent line. It's given by xn minus fxn over f prime xn. This is going to be the next term in our sequence, xn plus 1. With that said, we're ready to state the general procedure for Newton's method. If you're trying to approximate a root of the equation f of x is equal to 0, start with an initial guess, x0. It's helpful if you can get that initial guess close to the root. From here, we construct a sequence of terms x1, x2, x3, and so on that should hopefully be bringing us closer to our root. In general, we'll set xn plus 1 equal to xn minus fxn over f prime xn. When it works, Newton's method is an incredibly efficient way to approximate the roots of an equation. However, unlike the bisection method, Newton's method can fail even for nice functions. I'm going to show you two examples of this and then explain how you might go about fixing the problem. So first, consider the situation on the left. Suppose that this is my function in yellow, and I'm trying to approximate this root here in pink. I begin with an initial guess, x0, maybe that's somewhere over here, and then I carry out Newton's method. I find the equation of the tangent line to my function at x0, might look something like this, and I let x1 be the point where it crosses the x-axis. Now I do the same thing again. 
I look at the tangent line at x1, might look something like this, and I let x2 be the point where it crosses the x-axis. Notice anything interesting here? It looks like my points are getting closer and closer to this root over here, not the root I actually wanted to approximate. The problem here is in our initial guess x0. The issue is not that it's too far away from the desired root, but that it's on the wrong side of this critical point. Because we're on this downward sloping side, my tangent lines are going to carry me over to the root on the left. If instead I had picked an x0 on the right side of this critical point, Newton's method would carry me to the desired root. To fix this problem in practice, you just need a better guess. So maybe start with the bisection method to get a little bit closer to your root, and then pick your value of x0. That should avoid this problem. Another issue that may be concerning is that Newton's method doesn't converge at all. Take for example the function you see here on the right. This function has a single zero somewhere near the origin. I'll approximate this root using Newton's method. Maybe this is my initial guess x0. I consider the tangent line to my curve at x0, which might look something like this. Now here's the point where it crosses the x-axis, so that will be my x1. Next, I find the equation of my tangent line at x1, which is something like this. Whee! Notice that it's carrying me far, far away from my root. It's not converging to the place that I was hoping it would. This is a possibility, and it can often be fixed by making a better initial guess x0. For really problematic functions, though, you can always fall back on the bisection method.